linear cryptanalysis are two major uh, generic techniques for assessing the strength of block ciphers. Uh, these techniques have various extensions which can improve their success in various cases. Along with Davis attack, they form all the known shortcut attacks against the data encryption standard. Today, I will show an extension that reduces the complexity of the best attack on DES to less than 2 to 42. DES consists of 16 rounds of permutations and arithmetic operations. The block size of DES is 64 bits, and the key size is 56 bits. The main part of the run function is the F function. The F function uh, works on the right half of the data. Then the output of the F function is stored with the left half of the data, and the two halves are swapped before the next round. Let's take a deeper look at the F function. The F function expanded 32 input bits to 48 bits, stores them with the subkey, and transforms the result by 8 S boxes. Each of the 8 S boxes transforms its 6 input bits to 4 output bits using a nonlinear transformation. Then, the order of the resulting 32 bits is permuted to become the 32 output bits of the F function. Since the S boxes are the only nonlinear component, the attack is based on statistical linear relations of the S boxes. For example, the best linear approximation of S5 approximates the second bit of input to the XOR of the four output bits. The probability of this linear approximation is 12 divided by 64, as in 12 cases of the 64 possible inputs, the parity of these bits is 0, while in 52, the parity is 1. Linear cryptanalysis uses statistical approximations that approximate parity of subsets of bits of the plain text, ciphertext, and the subkeys. In an ideal cipher, any linear equation involving plain text bits, ciphertext bits, and key bits would hold with probability close to half when we're considering all the plain text in a plain text space and the corresponding ciphertext. Linear cryptanalysis take advantage of the fact that some linear approximations have probabilities different than half. Each approximation has a probability to hold, which is the fraction of plain text whose encryption satisfies the approximation. The ability to distinguish whether an approximation holds highly depends on the distance of the probability from half. We call this distance the bias of the approximation. A linear approximation is a tuple, lambda p, lambda c, and lambda k, where lambda p is subsets of bits of the plain text, lambda c is a subset of bits of the ciphertext, and lambda k is a subset of bits of the key. The probability of the approximation is the probability that the parity of these subsets of bits is equal to zero. The bias of the approximation is equal to the probability minus half. We are usually interested in approximation with the highest absolute value of the bias. Algorithm one finds the parity bits of the key involving the approximation. Given that the approximation holds with probability half plus epsilon and n plain text and their corresponding ciphertext, the algorithm counts the number m of plain text satisfying p lambda p x or c lambda c equal to zero. The algorithm guesses the parity of the key bits involved in the approximation. For example, if epsilon is greater than zero and m is greater than n half, the algorithm guesses that the parity of the key bits is zero. This algorithm finds only one parity bit of the key. The success rate of the algorithm grows as the absolute value of the bias increases. In particular, the amount of plain text required for this attack is proportional to one over the bias squared. In order to attack the full 16 round deaths, Matsu uses the best 14 round approximation, as we can see in this slide. Matsu uses algorithm two to find the parity bits of the key involving the approximation, same as in algorithm one, as well as bits of the first and last subkeys. The attack required about two to 43 non plain text and also time of analysis. We develop an extension of linear cryptanalysis that conditions linear approximations on other linear approximations. 
We use conditions to discard some of the data, so the bias of the remaining data increase or decrease. As the number of acquired known plaintext is proportional to one over the bias squared, discarding some of the data may improve the number of needed known plaintext. Conditions can be defined by any observable information, plaintext bits, ciphertext bits, and a formula on them. In the case of facial ciphers, we found a specific type of conditions that is highly based on their specific structure. In particular, we refer to bits that are the XOR of the outputs of the F function of the odd rounds, which are computable from the plaintext and the ciphertext. In this example, we can see that PL, the left, le the left half of the plaintext, XOR Y1, the output of the F function in the first round, XOR Y3, the output of the F function in the third round, is equal to CR, the left half of the ciphertext. Therefore, we can calculate the output the XOR of the output of the F function in all the odd rounds from the left half of the plain text and the right half of the cipher text. It is important to emphasize that this information on the XOR values is not probabilistic, unlike the situation in a general linear approximation. Such XOR bits, when viewed as linear approximations, typically have bias zero, but they are very useful as conditions to other approximations. I start with an example of such a linear dependency with a single active S-box. As mentioned earlier, this is the best non-trivial linear approximation, and the bias of this linear approximation is 12 divided by 64. In the case of single round, we can compute the output of the F function from the plaintext and the ciphertext. The output of the F function is equal to the left half of the plaintext X or the left half of the ciphertext. In this table, we calculated the bias of the linear approximation conditioning on all the four output bits of S5. It is an important and unexpected observation that only one of the 12 parity zero cases satisfies LSB equal one. These are the rate cases in this table, while the other 11 satisfy LSB equal zero. The bias of the approximation without any condition is minus 20 divided by 64. In 12 cases, the parity is zero, and in 52, the parity is one. When conditioning on LSB equals zero, in 11 cases, uh, the parity is zero, and in 21, the parity is one. And when you're conditioning on LSB equal one, the red case, in one case, the parity is zero, and in 31, the parity is one. So consider only encryptions in which the LSB is one. In this half of the data, the bias grows from minus 20 divided by 64 to minus 30 divided by 64, while the bias of the rest of the data reduces to minus 10 divided by 64. We will exemplify this with a scan from Adi Shamir's crypto paper. On the left side of the vertical line appear all the outputs which the second bit of input is zero. And on the right side of the line, all the outputs which the second bit of input is one. Shamir circled the values with an even parity of the four output bits. Therefore, in the left side, he circled the outputs which satisfy the, the approximation, and in the right side, he circled the outputs which do not satisfy the parity approximation. And the blue cases are the cases that satisfy the approximation. And we can see that only one of the blue cases is odd. Therefore, we see that when we condition on the odd cases in which LSB equal to one, we get one value against 31. It, it, it's not only that we can do it for a single round, we can extend conditional approximations to more than one round. In this case, we show it on four. So consider four successive rounds taken from Matsui as best linear approximation. This approximation uses three active S boxes S5 on the first and third round, and S1 on the fourth round. Notice that both odd rounds have the same active S-box, and that we can calculate the XOR of the output of S5 in all the odd rounds from the plaintext and the ciphertext. So what we are going to do is we are going to condition the bias of the linear approximation on these XOR values. In this table, we calculated the bias of the linear approximation conditioning on all the four XOR output bits of S5. We can see that in the case that the XOR of the LSB of the output of S5 is equal to one, 
the bias of the linear approximation is zero. These are the right cases in the table. So using only the plain text in which the XO of the LSB is equal to zero, increase the bias by a factor of two. So we need a quarter of the data compared to the regular linear attack with the same approximation, but this is the amount of data that remain after we discard half. So in total, we need half of the original data. We discard a plain text in which the XOR of the LSB is equal to one, and then we get the required quarter. The same factor of saving holds for an eight round reduced death. The same factor of saving holds for a 12 round reduced death. And the same factor of saving holds for the full 16 round death. But this is not the best attack on the full death. As mentioned earlier, in order to attack the full 16 round death, Matsu uses the best 14 round approximation denoted here uh, by lambda one. In this approximation, S5 is active in all the odd rounds. So we can do here the same. In this table, we calculated the bias of lambda one, conditioning on all the four XO output bits of S5. The bias of lambda one, when conditioned on LSB equal one, the red cases in the table, is improved by a small factor. So using this conditional linear approximation, we can save 12% over Matsui's attack. But we want to save more. So our attack is based on two 14 round linear approximations. Lambda one is the best 14 round linear approximation, same as Matsui uses. And lambda two differs from lambda one in the first round. Notice that S5 is active in all the odd rounds in both linear approximations. In these tables, we calculated the bias of lambda one and lambda two, conditioning on all the four XO output bits of S5. In the case of lambda one, the average bias of the red entries with X or LSB equal to one is greater than the average bias of the entries with X or LSB equal to zero. In the case of lambda two, the average bias of the red entries with X or LSB equal to zero is greater than the average bias of the entries with X or LSB equal to one. So the bias of lambda one when conditioned on LSB equal to one is improved by a factor of two to the 0 0.6. The bias of lambda two, which was much worse than the bias of lambda one, is improved by a higher factor of two to the 0 0.8. So the biases are almost similar after the improvement. In practice, in our attack, we use these two conditional linear approximations in a complex way. So in total, we can improve the complexity of the attack by a factor of about two. We tested most techniques with our uh, test programs, and uh, we can see in these graphs all the attacks against the data encryption standard. Uh, this is the success rate of the attack. And this is the complexity of the attack. I mean, the maximum between the number of needed plain text and the time of analysis. Uh, the brown curve is differential cryptanalysis. The orange one is linear cryptanalysis. And the red one is conditional linear cryptanalysis. Between the orange and the uh, red curve, we can see extensions of linear cryptanalysis. To summarize, uh, in this talk, we showed that linear approximations are highly affected by conditioning them on other approximations. We showed how to use such conditional approximations for attacks, leading to the best current attack against the data encryption standard. The simplest case is conditioning linear approximations on the XR of the output of the F function in all the odd rounds. We showed that even using a single conditional linear approximation, we can save 12% over Matsui's attack. Using both conditional linear approximations lead to attack against death with complexity less than two to 42. Thank you. Any question for staff? Thank you for the talk. So I just wonder if your uh, method can be applied to other ciphers uh, than this. So 
Okay, so uh, this example, technique SPN, can... For SPN cipher thing. Okay, in the case of SPN ciphers, we can condition linear approximations on any other linear approximations, and we can gain improving the bias in some cases. Okay, okay. any kind of linear approximation. More question? Uh, actually, I have one. So, did you try to uh, do an experimental verification of your attack? Of course. Uh, the graph we saw yeah. uh, was experimentally tried. Oh, that's real data? Yes. Okay, thank you. More questions? If no, let's thank staff again. Thank you.